Peace and blessings, brothers and sisters. Shalom. I'm coming to you today with a word. Itching ears, itching ears. People telling people what they want to hear. You have people who have itching ears. They don't want to hear the word as the Lord has given it. They want it according to give. tell me nice things. I want to read... Um, a piece to you from the book of 2 Timothy, chapter 4, verse 3 and 4. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust shall heap to themselves teachers having itching ears, and they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables. There are many people who have itching ears and worse still you have preachers so-called prophets teachers who are ticklers of ears they're not telling the people what they need to hear they're telling the people what they want to hear itching ears itching ears telling the people what they want to hear ticklers of ears but we know as is written in the book of peter God's judgment starts in the house of Israel. His judgment starts in the house of Israel. We cannot tell people what they want to hear. We are charged to tell the truth. Many people have taken on the position of speaking the word of God, and they have not been anointed. They have not been chosen. They have taken it unto themselves. We know who was the oracles, who were the oracles of God committed to. In the book of Romans, chapter 3, verse 2, it tells us the book, the oracles of God were committed unto Jacob, unto Israel. What are the oracles of God? That's the word of God. In order to teach it, in order to discern it, um, line upon line, precept upon precept, here a little, there a little. You have people, these ticklers of ears, who tell these other people with itching ears the things they want to hear. Everybody, everybody, we all the same. That's not true. If we were all the same, a lot of the things that are happening to us now would not be happening. Then there are people who say, well, we're all the same in the spirit. This may well be true in the sense that if you believe in the word of God, God does, in fact, recognize you. But God looks at his people, not just individually. He looks at people as a nation. What did he do when it came to the nation of Israel? First of all, we find in the book of Romans, chapter 3, verse 2, he committed the oracles of God unto uh, the house of Israel. We're going to start chapter 3, verse 1. What advantage then have the Hebrew, or what profit is there of circumcision? Much, every way. Chiefly because unto them were committed the oracles of God. You have other nations that are trying to discern and disseminate the word, so much so that they feel as though since they have been above during the time of our uh, destruction, during the time of our calamity and our curse, they want to be above even when it comes to the word of God. But the word itself is telling you the oracles of God were committed unto Israel. I'm going to read it again, but I'm going to find it. We're going to go to the book of Psalms, chapter, I mean, book of Psalms. 147, verse 19 and 20. He has showed his word unto Jacob, his statutes and his judgment unto Israel. He hath not done so with any nation. As for his judgments, they have not known them. All right. He has showed, he showed his word unto Jacob, Jacob. So who are the preachers? Who are the teachers? Who are the prophets? Who are the scribes? Who are the seers? According to the word, not my word, because I don't, I'm not a teacher, a tickler of ears. Okay. He, who is he? The most high. He showed his word unto Jacob, his statutes and his judgments unto Israel. He hath not done so with any nation. Those of you who want to talk about it's not fair, you might want to talk to the most high. Okay. Because this is what he did. Okay. He showed his word unto Jacob, his statutes and his judgments unto Israel. He hath not done so with any nation. And as for his judgments, they have not known them. Now we're going to go to the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 7, verse 6. 
For thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy God. The Lord thy God has chosen thee to be a special people unto himself, above all people that are upon the face of the earth. The Lord has salted Israel. He's given them his word to teach, to disseminate unto the other nations how we should conduct ourselves, how we should praise and worship. Even now, there are sacrifices that we are supposed to make. Yes, there are still sacrifices that we are supposed to make. You want to know what the sacrifice is right now that we are supposed to make? We're going to go back into the book of Psalms. We're going to go back into the book of Psalms, okay? Um, praise ye the Lord. When you praise God, it is the sacrifice of thanksgiving. It is the sacrifice of thanksgiving, okay? When you sing praises unto him, for it is good to sing praises unto our God, for it is pleasant and praise is comely. The sacrifice of thanksgiving, okay? Um, he is telling the people, there is a sacrifice in thanksgiving, okay? We can sacrifice not by just our lips, but that it be truly in our heart when we praise, when we honor, when we glorify God for all the blessings, for all the things that he has done. And what you will find when you start counting your blessings, when you begin to give thanks, even in the midst of turmoil, your heart will begin to get lifted. The trouble, the vexation on you, it, that it will break that spirit, okay? It will break down spiritual strongholds because God inhabits the praise of his people. So when we praise, when we give thanks unto the Lord, we begin to get blessed. And you have to also understand when the world teaches us, the reason why Israel, the oracles of God, were committed unto Israel, the world's idea of a blessing, the world's idea of prosperity is different than what the prosperity of the Lord teaches us. We prosper in health. We prosper in our spiritual knowledge, in our mental knowledge, in our physical health. Our children prosper. They have good health. Everything we put our hands to prospers, okay? The blessing of the Lord comes upon us. So when you discern these different things, one of the reasons why the oracles of the Lord were given unto Israel and you have to remember those of you who holler about fair, fair, fair. You're speaking the words of the world. That's the words of the world. A lot of people will argue that going into enslavement and being brutalized was not fair. And yet it happened. And how did it happen? Because it was one of the edicts of the Most High God that if we went against his laws, his commands, his statutes, if we ran after these no gods, if we followed the ways of those other nations, we would go into enslavement and his word, which goes out, does not come back void, came to pass. One of the other things, everybody wants to teach and preach this thing where, okay, no Gentiles going into enslavement. That's a lie. It's a lie. I spoke of it earlier. You want, you have itching ears. You want me to tickle your ears. I'm not going to do it. I'm going to speak the word of God. Okay, I'm going to speak the word of God because this does not come down by way of a man or woman, a person. This comes from the most high God. God said he will not be mocked. You reap what you have sown. And in this case, they get a double portion of it. Okay, is it any wonder when you think about how Babylon went out and conquered the world, what did they do? They flooded those nations. They flooded those nations. Okay, they came in, the people that were there did not want them there. Well, guess what? Now their nations are being flooded. They're being overrun. Is it any wonder? Is it any wonder? If you if you open your eyes, if you watch, and we're not doing ticklers of ears, ticklers of ears, I'm going to speak as an oracle of the Most High God because he committed it unto Israel. There are some among us, we're, we're holy people, a peculiar people, a nation of priests. We have that anointing. Does God touch other nations? Yes, he does. Does God hear when people from other nations 
accept his word and follow it as best they can? Yes, he does. Does that remove God's word and what he said he's going to do? No, it does not. I think you need to stop going by what the world told you and start recognizing what God said, okay? Because a lot of the things that they have done is being done. They went and they flooded other nations. They overwhelmed the other nations, okay? And now they're being overwhelmed. You look over in Europe, and they're overrun with other people, and they can't stop them. They cannot stop them. But if you remember history, it, it, it's a shadow. It's, it's a mirror image of what they did. They went in with disease. Many people, they did not ever have to raise a hand to them. The disease that they brought with them, the disease that they spread was taking those people down. Is it any wonder that the pestilence is going out, taking them down? Okay. When God speaks about leaving nations desolate, desolate is also another word for barren, barren. Some of the wounds are barren, barren. Okay, we are watching this prophecy come to pass before our eyes, brothers and sisters. And you need to understand when Israel is standing up, waking up, many are awake, and God is adding, adding, adding. Yeshua is teaching and they're speaking and preaching the word to you. The oracles were committed to them. You have other nations, many of the nations of the oppressor. They're watching now, like, I'll watch everything you say so that I have a comeback. You can't have a comeback for flesh because this doesn't come from flesh. It comes from the Most High God. And it doesn't matter what you say. It changes nothing. Long before you were born, the Word of God was. Long after you are dead and gone, so am I. The Word of God is. It will not change because somebody doesn't like what it says. It is not here to suit anybody's political ideologies. It doesn't matter. God's going to do what he's going to do. He committed the oracles of God unto Jacob. Does that mean that everybody of the Hebrews is a seer or a prophet or a preacher? No, it doesn't. But it does mean that his spirit is on that peculiar people. And they're the ones to disseminate that word. They're the ones to spread that word as they wake up. And it needs to be known. It needs to be understood because there's a lot of confusion going on. You have some people, they want to keep authority. No, we, we can say it just as good as you. If that be the case and you had authority, why are these things going on? Why is all this debauchery, this sexual, uh, uh, just debauchery and abominations going on? If you were following those books that were stolen and hidden away, why is it going on? One of the other things you have to recognize uh, about taking these children, all these children disappearing, is there were people who followed after Moloch, Moloch, and what did they do? They sacrificed children. They sacrificed children. And you've got the spirit of Moloch, which I cast down. I bind it up. I cast it down in the mighty name of Yeshua HaMashiach because it is being exposed. It's being exposed, okay? Brothers and sisters, we do not need to have itching ears listening to people tell us what we want to hear. We need to follow what the Word of God says. We need to learn. We need to discern. This isn't about bragging. This isn't about boasting because God will also punish his own if they subvert the Word of God, if they use it for their own gain, say it, if they use it to try to elevate themselves. All praise to God. All honor to God. All glory to Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Why? These are not my words. God in his beauty and in his power is so gracious. He gives us the opportunity to speak his words. These are not my words, but my Father committed them unto me that when I speak them, I speak them correctly. He's humble enough to allow us to share his word and to teach one another the manner that we should walk in. There are some people that are talking about when the Gentiles go in enslavement, they're going to do just any and everything they want. No, because that's the mind, that's a carnal mind. Many people are not even going to make enslavement because the evil they have done, the judgment on them is death. They're not even going to make enslavement. They are going to die because of the evil they have done. All right? Other people who have not done the, the, the same are going to be enslaved. 
okay? But we are not those people. We don't have debauchery in us. We're not going to be raping men and children, setting people on fire, burying them alive, feeding them babies to alligators, just doing horrors, doing medical experiments on them. No, we will not because we are the children of the Most High God. We are above and beyond anything that the nations whom God is judging are going to get. We are not going to operate in that manner. We are not. As a matter of fact, God said no evil will be. Nothing that defiles will be on his holy mountain. Nothing. There won't even be animals that can raise up against a human being. None of that evil will be on his holy mountain. And praise God. Yes, when those people go in enslavement, we will treat them as the word of God, as the spirit of the Most High teaches us. We will do no more and we will do no less. We will not do any debauchery that goes against the spirit because guess what? That would make us rebels. God would destroy us because we would have become those things that he hates. So that's not what we're going to do. We have to raise up a little higher, brothers and sisters. We got to raise up a little higher and recognize that this thing that's going out, it's a cleansing. As a matter of fact, there's a storm coming. There's a storm coming, and it's going to be fire this time. You got nations ramping up and getting their armies ready. You cannot beat God. He's sending down fire. He's sending down hailstones. Some of those hailstones are going to weigh as much as 500 pounds. It doesn't matter. They bring out their little laser ships. You imagine just a torrential rain of fire and 500-pound hailstones. Yeah, I would like to see your uh, satellite. I would like to see whatever tank you have withstand it. And it is pummeling, pummeling, falling, falling. The power of the Most High God is beyond anything we could think of, brothers and sisters. So what I would say, get your house in order. Watch. And do not be... Uh, a tickler of ears. If you're the person that God has put his spirit on, don't tickle anybody's ear. You tell them what God said. It's not about what I think. It's not about what you think. It's about what God said. Sharing that word, sharing that spirit. And to know, you can have those nations studying us, trying to figure out, well, they think they know the Bible. I think it's beautiful. I think it's beautiful that whether you speak about the word of God negatively or positively, as Paul said, the word's going out. The word's going out. It doesn't matter whether people believe that we are the most highest children. It doesn't matter because God knows. And pretty soon he's going to show the entire world. But don't be one who is a tickler of ears. I don't want to tell them this because this could upset them. Then keep your mouth shut because you're not doing the, the, the work of the Most High God. These people have itching ears. They don't want to know the truth. They are altering the word of God. But you stay true. Let all men be liars. But the word of God, you keep the word of God true. Okay. When the Gentiles had an opportunity, they did not use it. They did not use it. Whether you're talking about these big religious institutions, they knew about the debauchery. They knew about the evil. They turned a blind eye. They turned a blind eye. But if you're the leader, you're given a certain responsibility that you owe to first to God, first to the Most High, to Elohim, to Yah. And then you have to take care of those things which have been committed to you. And as I speak, I'm speaking according to what the Spirit of the Lord has told me. The oracles of God have been given to Israel. A lot of people say we're all the same. It's not true. Different people have different attributes. Okay? If I was looking for a nation that had rhythm, for those people who want to talk about it's all the same, it's all the same, I don't think that little salted rhythm of the house of Israel would look the same if I went to other nations. God can do anything he wants to do, and this is what he has done. There is a certain responsibility that comes along with it. And when you teach the nations, you teach according to the truth, the truth being the word of the Most High God. There are many people that are going to go and use the word of God. Then when they get to judgment, they're going to go before God. Lord, Lord, I did all these things in your name. And he's going to tell them, be gone from me, you worker of iniquity, for I knew you not. Because when you study the word of God, the word of God is quick and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit. What does that mean? The spirit 
that teaches us is separate from our mind and how we think. It separates, okay? He can discern the thoughts of our heart. When you study the Word of God, the Word of God, which is spirit and life, turns right back around and studies you. It knows your intents. Everything is laid bare to the eyes of the Most High. So you be committed to the truth. You be committed to what God did and why God is doing it. It doesn't matter about opinions. It doesn't matter about how somebody feels. This is about the Most High God. He is not conforming to some political standard. This world is so corrupt, it's an abomination. It's an abomination up against the Most High God. It's come up with the stench of Sodom and Gomorrah, the murder, the debauchery, the sexual, it, 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 the obscenity of it all. But it's not for a person to determine. God's determined it. So those who have had the oracles of God committed unto them, do not be a tickler of ears. Don't be that false prophet that you tell the people what they want to hear when God did not tell you that. If he didn't tell you that, keep your mouth shut because your word's going to fall to the ground anyway. The only thing that's going to come to pass is what the Most High said. And what he says will never change. Brothers and sisters, you be at peace. You walk in the light. Don't let somebody just give you words, itching ears, itching ears. The man or the person or the woman or God that wants to get up and say things because it makes you feel good. But there's no truth in it. There's no meat on that bone. You need to follow what the Most High has said. Walk in the light and learn. Be at peace. Be blessed. Shalom.